All right. Good morning, everybody. Brady, I'm going to do a quick check before I go ahead and get started. Are you able to see the uh, PowerPoint here? I am, John, yes. All right, perfect. We have a number of attendees that are rolling in right now. So as we uh, turn over the hour here, I'll go ahead and get us kicked off. Uh, so first off, thank you, everybody, for joining our webinar today. Um, and for those of you that have attended our previous webinars, thank you for uh, returning back to the webinar series where we'll be diving into the procurement process, specifically how we can perfect your procurement process. Uh, today, I'm joined with Brady Bloomer, a business solutions consultant at SVA, and I'm also joined with Tanya Kreitzer, a client success manager at SVA. As we get started, a few housekeeping items before we jump into today, today's agenda, especially for any new attendees to the webinar here. As we proceed throughout the presentation today, there's gonna to be a presentation and demonstration. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop those in the Zoom chat. Tanya is going to be managing those questions as they come through. If they're related to the topics that we're covering at the time, we'll do our best to address those during the demonstration or during the presentation. However, we'll also have a Q&A session towards the end of today's webinar uh, to address any of those questions we may have missed or those that were unrelated to the topic um, as we don't wanna derail the, the process here, make sure we get through all of our topics today. Um, and if there's anything in terms of questions or um, any follow-up that you have, I will definitely reach out as well after the webinar. So just make sure that you drop those in the chat. All right, to get started here, I'll give a quick breakdown of today's topics, what we can expect as we go through this process. Brady, feel free to jump in with any additional context as we get started. Uh, first, as we get into the procurement process, really end to end, the request, the requisition, the purchasing process, we wanna define a few key terms that we should be on the lookout for. Hopefully some of these sound familiar to those that have already started to explore the purchasing functionality, uh, but we also want you to be on the lookout for these as we proceed through the demonstration today. <clears throat> Before we get into Acumatica, we'll do a procurement process flow overview so we know the steps that we can expect to see in the system today. And then we'll go into Acumatica. I'll kick us off with a, a quick opening item within Acumatica, and then Brady will be taking us through most of today's demonstration, starting with the requests and requisitions, and then transitioning into vendor pricing and discounts and how we manage those. As we wrap up, as I said, we'll have a designated Q&A um, session for us, followed by next steps, the introduction into our next webinar, which will be coming up here in March. I will have a link to that information so that you can attend that session as well. All right, so as we get started, a few key terms that we need to understand. Uh, first off is going to be our request. That's really going to be the starting point for today. In Acumatica, we're not limited by our users in terms of our licensing. And so what we see is more of an open format for generating requests at a very basic level as an introduction into the pro uh, purchasing process. As certain individuals need, say, equipment or supplies within the organization, that can be provided through a more generic request. I don't know all the accounting information. I might not know the vendor. We'll get into some of those details. That request is going to be our starting point today. After that request, we'll get into the acquisition. And so that's gonna be our connection point between this more or less informal request and the actual purchase order that gets sent out to the vendor. Um, so this requisition process has a number of different areas or different um, uh, options in terms of functionality that should help with the procurement process, such as the vendor bidding process. Brady will take us through that in the system today. Additionally, we'll take a look at two areas with pricing. So I'm gonna show here the price list and then also this concept of a price worksheet. Uh, these two really work in conjunction with each other to help manage your vendor pricing. Now that might be for adjustments that are related to promotional pricing, discounted pricing. There might be certain quantity um, pricing that is provided. All of that can be um, centralized through Acumatica and managed appropriately. What I wanna call out here too is 
within the price list, we specifically call out stock and non-stock items. In the purchasing process, we have this concept of inventoried or stocked items and non-stocked items that operate similar to inventory items, but aren't truly inventoried. So you'll see as we go through this process, how those things can be managed. We don't need a true inventory system in place for that to, um, for that purchasing process to occur. And that even includes the receding process. Brady, anything to add on the key terms before we get into the flow? Yeah, I think a lot of times what we see is some of these processes exist today outside of the system and being able to combine all of it into one system will really make the purchasing flow a lot easier. And you'll see that in our demo a little bit, but grabbing that request that originated from Acumatica rather than maybe an Outlook email or a Teams chat or grabbing pricing that is housed in the system rather than having to go and look at an Excel document that's stored on your, your Q drive. <clears throat> yeah, having something that's fully integrated right within Acumatica. And sometimes I've seen Brady in some examples, it might even be a post-it note in some of these cases, right? right? <clears throat> so what we can expect from the process flow perspective, really laying out the whole procurement cycle here for us. So at the start, that request and requisition process that I've already spoken to and what we can expect upfront in terms of requesting items as just an employee within the organization. Kind of have a unique scenario that we'll go through for our, our process here today, but you'll see that starting point, the request and requisition. <clears throat> From there, we can move into the purchase order process, formalizing the PO, making sure that we can actually establish the, the right pricing, the right vendor, all of that um, to facilitate our purchasing process. We can have approval within that as well. Now, what we'll also go through from the purchase order perspective is the delivery and the receipt. So that when we move further in this process and we get to invoicing, we have the ability to perform a three-way match. So that purchase order, purchase receipt, and the invoice that we've now received from the vendor. If we aren't um, including a purchase receipt, say for non-stock items, we don't really necessarily need to acknowledge a receipt. We can also perform a two-way match between the invoice and the purchase order. And then lastly, we would carry over into the payment process. Standard AP processing with that invoice, we've now, um, we've now captured the purchase order and purchase receipts, and we're ready to pay our vendor. <clears throat> so as we get going through this process in terms of approvals and notifications, wanting to make sure your team is aware of what's happening in this purchase process, We'll have hints of that and we'll actually show some additional capabilities that can be included to make this process better and distribute the communication to the people that are involved in the right way. Again, our goal is to minimize a lot of the things that might happen outside of the system or might happen manually today. So we'll introduce a few of those additional topics that aren't necessarily required, but can be a great value add to this process. All right, Brady, anything on the process flow? Yeah, I think I'll just add, John, that in this diagram here, you see the approval slotted after the requisition phase. And just want to point out that that can be moved to different phases of this flow. And so it might make more sense for your business to have an approval when the PO is created or further down the road when you are receiving the invoice from your vendor. And so those can exist in different spots. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. We're not restricted to a, an approval between those two steps, right? It can occur at any point in the process, depending on what the organization requires. All right. So now we'll transition into the system. We wanted to make sure that we got into Acumatica quickly here. And I think, Brady, I have to start off with a request. That's correct, John. All right. So I'll go ahead and bring up Acumatica. Go over here. All right. All right. And so I'm in my uh, purchases here, I've created a request. All right. And I'm actually going to go into one here that we have. Request number 12. We'll keep that number in mind as we proceed forward today. Uh, Brady, are you able to see Acumatica? I am. Yes, John. Perfect. Perfect. All right. <clears throat> so as an employee within the system, um, I am creating a request in a unique way. So we wanted to show some separation of duties between the two of us. Um, so 
I am on Brady's behalf creating a request to what appears to be build out his new office a little bit. All right, so he has all the key criteria to make an office. Um, and we have a noise canceling headset, an Acer laptop, and a coffee maker as a part of this initial request. So minimal information here to start. And Brady, I think that we want to add in an additional item. I think there's perhaps some uh, TV limitations that we want to make sure we can we can appropriately accommodate. That's right, John. So let's go ahead. Let's add an item in there. 40 inch TV, I think would look great in my office for work purposes, of course. All right, let me just specify that. And what you'll see as John enters in his item here is he only has to enter the description. And so again, this is just a general form. Think of it as replacing what you might send an email to your purchasing team for. And so the requester might not know the inventory ID that is associated with this item that they are requesting. The purchasing team will provide that information further down the road. We'll go ahead and add in a few. I think, uh, Brady, we just ex expect one TV. Is that correct? That, that'll that suffice, okay. yeah. Okay. All right, perfect. <clears throat> All right, and I think just based off of the upcoming office, we wanna make sure that that's in place by February 29th, if we can. All right, I'll go ahead and save that as a, a request. So again, as a few few key pieces here, you'll notice that this request for um, Brady's new office is linked to my user profile. So John Rosine here, this is linked to my employee record within Acumatica. So we'll make sure that as we proceed through this process, the initial request is directed back to me. <clears throat> All right, Brady, was there anything else that you wanted to cover on the request before we go ahead and move this one along? No, go ahead, John, and remove that hold. And doing that, we'll queue this up to the purchasing team to let them know that they have some requested items to consolidate into what will be this next step, our requisition. Excellent. All right. So with that being removed, I can see the request now is open. So we've removed that hold and we should be all set to requisition this. I'll go ahead and stop sharing, Brady. And I think, again, a little separation of duties here. We want to make sure that I am not requisitioning, creating the purchase order and paying the vendor all in one step here. All right. So John, can you confirm, can you see? Yep, I can see the Acumatica demo. All right. And so where we're gonna go next is our create requisition screen. So that's gonna be in our purchase module. And then under our requisitions work group here, we have create requisitions. From here, we'll see all the items requested by users in the system who have filled out that request form that we just reviewed. All right. As we let this load here, what we'll see is what requests each item came from. We'll also get into some additional information such as who requested it, some information on the item, so that description that John provided for me, the unit of measure, how many of those he's requesting. If the requester did know the inventory ID and they were able to put that information in on the request, you'll get some additional information stored on that item that might be of use as well, such as that last cost coming through here and maybe a preferred vendor. So as I take a look at this, what I wanna do next is I wanna review those requests and process the ones that we would consolidate onto a single PO and send to one vendor. And so looking at the four items that John's requested for my new office, I think what makes logical sense here that we might get from the same vendor is maybe my headset for those Teams calls, my laptop, and my 40 inch TV. The coffee maker will probably be a separate PO to a different supplier. And so grabbing these items, I'm going to go ahead and press process now. What that'll do is it'll create my requisition for me. And you'll see my screen 
uh, kind of go to that go to that new transaction now. As I jump into my requisition here, what we're going to want to do as the purchasing team now is review these descriptions that John has entered, and I want to add those respective inventory items to our requisition. And so I know that we have a noise canceling headset in our stock item list. I'm gonna go ahead and grab that, double check our warehouse, make sure that that is correct and continue down our list here to add our items to our requisition. All right. And so there might be times where you're creating a new request and you go in and you'll have to create a new stock item first then come in here and add that to your requisition. Okay. You might have an alternate ID stored on the item. You'll see that come through as well. But at this point, we're done entering our items. We've reviewed what John has requested. We can go ahead and we can save our requisition. At this point, the next step is going to be to select the vendor that we are going to create this PO for. All right. We're also going to want to double check our cost. Remember that this form will populate our PO for us automatically. So the more that we can fill out now, the less we have to touch our PO later when we create it. So my cost looks good. That's what I'm going to want to carry over onto my PO. So let's go ahead and add in our vendor. We're going to jump to that bidding tab here. That'll make a little bit more sense why it's located in this tab in just a few moments when we go over that vendor bidding process. But for now, all we have to do is select the vendor that we wish to purchase this from. So we can grab our vendor list here, select our vendor. We wanna take a look at some of the vendor information from that vendor. We have that here, terms, PO type, and all that address and info that's stored on the account. All right, so let's save our requisition. Again, there might be an approval step here that you add in. In this specific instance, I don't have an approval at the requisition phase. So I can go ahead, I can remove my hold. And the next step for me, now that I'm done reviewing this requisition, is to create that PO. So after I remove my hold, I get this button up top here that says create orders. If I select this, it's going to automatically turn this requisition into my purchase order. And I can see that link that exists from my purchase order tab here right on my requisition. You can see that it was created today, what vendor it was for, the total cost, who's the owner of that PO, and then as well at the very start here, our PO number with that hyperlink. So that hyperlink, we can jump right into that. It's going to open up a pop-up window for me. And we can take a look at what the PO looks like when it was created from our requisition. All right, so again, we don't have to make any changes here yet, hopefully, because we did all of that initially on our requisition. When it's created, it's created in its natural status. So in this case here, it's pending approval. And so I have an approval step on my POs when they're created to go to back to the business executive team so they can review that, get it approved, and then I can move forward after that approval. And so while John takes a look at the PO, I'm going to go ahead and show a few other things so that he can approve that. If I jump into my other tab here, you'll see at the top of this table, I have that requisition number. So again, that two-way link that exists between the transactions so that from whichever side you're on, you can link back into either the requisition or to the purchase order. All right. John, were you able to take a look at that purchase order and get it approved here? I am just about to finish up that approval here. 
Um, right. I'll admit there's quite a bit in my queue here, and I'm a little bit concerned on how expensive this office is going to be. But let me go <laughs> ahead. That's 1845. I'll go ahead and approve that one. All right. Brady, hopefully now if you do uh, a refresh, we can see that that's advanced. Yep. So refresh my purchase order. My approval is gone. If I want to take a look at my approvals, I can go ahead and jump into that approval tab on my purchase order. We can see that it was assigned to my executive work group. John, being a part of that, went ahead and approved it for me. And you have that, a date, that date along with it for when it was approved. And Brady, on those approvals, we do have a question. Can you have multiple approvals by different varying staff between the different steps in the process? I mean, how simple or complex can we make this? Yeah, so we can really make our approvals um, pretty complex. We can put them in different spots so we could have an approval on that requisition, a second approval needed on the purchase order, and maybe down the road on the, the payable side as well. And we can also set up a hierarchy or a step approval. And so maybe depending on the cost of that purchase order, if it's within $10,000, it just has to go to uh, the purchasing manager. If it's over $10,000 and under 100,000, then it has to be approved by the purchasing manager. After that, it goes to um, the executive suite. Anything over 100,000, maybe it has to do those first two steps and then go to the CEO. So we can really add some complexity into these approvals. And like you saw here, we can either assign them to an individual or to a group of people to review. Great question. All right here. So as I continue on with my purchase order, the next step that it's going to want me to do is send out my PO to the vendor. So I'm going to go ahead and email my purchase order. All right. Now that that's been sent, we can imagine it's been a couple of days here, hopefully not too long till I can set up my office. We want to enter in our purchase receipt and get those items into our facility here. So we can go ahead and enter our PO receipt when those items come in. From here, we'll take a look at our purchase receipt, make sure everything looks right on the packing slip that they've sent us. We can save this purchase receipt and then go ahead and release it and bring these items into our facility. All right, so as we think back to the very start of this process, John was the one who entered in this request. And so it'd be really nice if John being the person who made that request from, from the start could get different updates <clears throat> on this purchase order process that's going through. And so as I've been going through this process, John has been getting emails sent to his inbox automatically coming from the system Again, this is based on different stages of the process. And we can make these so that they make sense for your business. I and can so John, I can confirm, Brady. I have been getting some some notifications here in my email inbox. Um, it, and I think last week, right before the Super Bowl, I was getting quite a few requests for these TVs. Um, and so continuing the notification streak here, it seems. All right. And so the way we had it set up, John would have received an email letting him know that his request has been converted to a PO and sent to the vendor. And then additionally, a second one to get a final update that his items have been received in. All right, John, anything you wanna add there? Um, at this time, uh, Brady, did you want me to share out the emails? Yeah, if, that if we you do have that? the emails, John, let's go ahead and share them out so we can show what Perfect. these automatic emails look like when they're sent from the system to those requesters and kind of giving them those updates along the way. All right, cool. So I have two here that I'll go ahead and show. All right, so first, when the purchase order was created, All right, let me go ahead and take over the screen share. Stop here. sharing here, John. <clears throat> mm 
<laughs> right? All right, looks like we can see them now, John. All right, you can see. The so the first one um, I have as a purchase order was created. I got no. <clears throat> All right, I think I might have gotten kicked off. Seems like you're back now, John. Yeah, all right. Let me go ahead and try sharing that out again. Uh, they're limiting my technology as I approve all of these TVs to go out to our staff. <laughs> all right, can you see the notification here? We can, yes. All right, cool. So uh, Brady, as you're going through the process here, I did get a notification out of the system. Uh, purchase order was created for your request. So dear John Rosina, first order was created on request number 12. Um, and you do indicate here that I'll receive a second one once they've actually been received in. Now, again, I think, Brady, we're not limited to this template. We can tailor this specifically to any organization and the detail that's required, including perhaps a link back into Acumatica to view that request. That's correct. Excellent. And then I have also here, let me bring up another one. Um, so as we were proceeding through the process, um, your requested items have been received. And so acknowledgement of a purchase receipt against my originating request. So we see here that link as me assigned to the employee on that originating request, again, attaching my employee record. I was a point of communication for the notifications. In the background, we just have that set up um, through our business events to automatically trigger those out based off of the different steps in the sequence. Uh, Brady, anything to add? Anything you'd like to highlight in the notifications? No, like John said, they're able to be configured to what you would like them to show and send out to the different individuals that might receive these. And so they can be customized to what works best for your business here. Awesome. And similar to what we had a uh, conversation around the approval process, right? We can really insert these notifications at any point in the process. Maybe that is upon approval of a purchase order. Maybe that's upon um, an approval of a request. If we have that, we can have different triggers. Uh, but I think it's a good representation of at least two that we could anticipate with the request, hitting the purchase order, and then actually receiving the items. Um, so now, Brady, you can run over and grab your 40-inch TV. Awesome. Not the coffee maker yet, though. <laughs> All right. No, no long work hours then yet until I get that coffee maker. Yeah. All right. Let me share out my screen again here. We'll walk through the vendor bidding process. All right, so John, confirm that you can see Acumatica again. Yep, requisition 13. All right, perfect. And so we'll walk through this same example, but this time we don't know the vendor right away. We're looking to send out some RFQs to gather some price info from a variety of vendors so we can make an informed decision before creating our PL. So we have here is create a new requisition. This can be done by consolidating requests, like I just showed with John's request there, or by simply adding lines directly to a requisition form. All right. so for today, I've spun up this requisition for us. Shouldn't, shouldn't be any surprises. It looks just like the one we were just working on here. When it comes to selecting the vendor, however, this process will be different. So I'm gonna to navigate to my bidding tab on my requisition. And rather than choosing a single vendor here, I'm actually gonna use the table below and list a few vendors that I'd like to send our RFQs out to. So by clicking this add row button here, I'm able to add vendors to this requisition. You'll see as I add them in here, their default lead times and locations come through. If you want to take a look at some of the vendor information within that vendor, as I'm highlighted on one of these, I can click the vendor info and a pop-up will come through with the information that's housed in that account. All right. So let's save our requisition here. We can go ahead, we can remove our hold on this. 
And our next step in the progression is going to be to send out that request for proposal to our vendors. And so let's go ahead and do that here. Right on the top of my screen, I have send request for proposal. And as I do that, it's going to grab the form for that RFQ and push it out to an email to the accounts that are on. There we go. The accounts that are on the vendors. And so as you see, my request sent checkbox is being checked when I click that send request for proposal button, letting me know that the emails have been sent out to those vendors. If you need to send a single request out later, maybe to a third vendor or resend it to an, a vendor, simply highlighting the vendor or adding that new vendor in and then clicking send request will resend that request for proposal out to them. All right, so we've sent those out. Hopefully, in not too long of time, they've come back with some quotes for us. And when they do that, uh, there's two main things that we'll want to do here. And so I'll open up some quotes that we would have gotten back from our vendors here. And so you'll see our first vendor, Alta Ace, they came back and they quoted the three items. And then we had our second vendor, AA Services, also quote those three items. Looks like the prices are a little bit higher with this second vendor here. But as we get these PDFs into our uh, email inbox, we'll want to save them right here on this requisition in Acumatica. So that way we can have them stored in the system. I'm going to close out my requisitions here, or my quotes, I apologize. And I'm going to attach them as files right on this requisition. So as I click that files button, I can either browse my, my folder or I can just drag and drop those quotes right in here and attach them this way. And now for all users that have access to this requisition in the system, they're able to see the quotes that I received back from those vendors. So this is gonna be our first step in our requisition process when we get our quote back. The second step is we're gonna to wanna to update the results directly in Acumatico. And so we we'll wanna put in what those prices were and then any other additional information that they gave us with that quote. To do that, We'll start by selecting which vendor we want to enter in the response for first. And then I can click this vendor response button. It'll open up a pop-up for me where I'm able to enter in some of that information. And so from here, I'm just gonna double check my bid quantity. So what did they bid for us? They said, came back for one of each of these this is the pricing that we're going to have. Maybe they've increased a little bit since those last costs. All right. And then if you have a bid number, that would just be the quote number that came on the quote that was sent to you. All right. Some additional information from the quote can go in to that vendor info tab that you see here. Things like the expiration date on that quote. So maybe we wanna set that out, potentially a 30 day expiration. When did they promise, to us, promise, to, promise us these by? And so we'll come in here, this vendor, maybe they said they'll give it to us in two weeks. All right. And then how are they shipping it to us? Potentially overnight. Any information that you have on that quote will bring in here for you. As we save this, it's tracking that response for us. I'm gonna go ahead and back out of there. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna enter in my response for the other vendor that came back to me with a quote. So we'll walk through that same process here. As I'm on my bidding tab, you'll see some of that information that I entered under my vendor info is being populated right here on my requisition. All right, so let's go ahead, let's enter in the vendor response for my second vendor here. And maybe they also increased their prices a little bit since the last cost. Right. 
a bid number, we can go ahead and add a bid number here. And let's not forget to add the quantity that they are bidding us for. As I track the vendor information, maybe a similar expiration date within 30 days. But they said you know, they're going through some supply chain issues. They can't get it to us until three weeks out. And they're going to ship it to us maybe FedEx ground. We can go ahead and we can save their response in the system as well. All right, let's jump back into our requisition here. We now have both of our quotes saved as PDFs on our requisition to view if we have to. We have those responses entered in as data in the system to track. And so we can view our bidding. And if we click this view bidding button, it'll give us a consolidated view of all of our responses for each item. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. You can open up a pop-up window. I'm gonna make this one a little bit bigger for everyone to see for us. You'll see here we have our two bidding vendors listed again. But I want to go to the bidding results for us here. And so as I look at this page, what we'll see is for each item, what were the different bids that came in, the different quotes that came in from our two vendors. And you can see here, as I navigate to different items, you'll see those bid costs and those bid quantities change based on what I just entered into the system. Mm -hmm. Some of the other functionality that exists from this specific screen here is the system can make a educated assumption for you on which vendor you would like to use. And so it'll select the cheapest vendor by total extended cost when you click the update results button here. All right. You can also clear results and select this vendor yourself. So I simply going back into the bidding tab, taking a look at our two vendors. If I click choose vendor here, you'll see that my vendor is now selected for me to go ahead and create my PO from. And so there might be various reasons why you wouldn't want the system to select a vendor just based off of the lowest extended cost. You might have relationships with certain vendors. You know that they do a better job with their freight. Um, there might be annual discounts that you have to consider for the future purchase orders that you're going to place with them. And so you might just want to choose a vendor yourself here after you've reviewed the quotes and the bidding that has taken place. Once we get our vendor selected as such, it's going to work similar to our process that we just worked through on the last example here. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to create my orders. All right, now we're done with that. We have our PO linked. That kind of wraps up the vendor bidding requisition process that I want to talk about in my demo today. John, before I move on, anything that you'd like to add? I don't think so, Brady. All right. And so then the next portion of our demo, I just want to walk through vendor pricing, how we can save price lists in Acumatica to, Acu to automatically pull pricing into our POs when we create them. So we're going to navigate to our vendor price screen. That's going to be in our payables module. I can go ahead right under profiles. I have vendor prices. As this loads up for us here, what you'll see is we have a list of all of our saved current vendor prices in the system. We can filter this down to make it more manageable for us. And so for today's example, maybe I just wanna update the annual price list for my go-to vendor. I'm gonna jump into my vendor parameter here, grab their ID or vendor account name, and we'll filter down our list that way. All right, so we start off by seeing their current pricing and what for what we buy from them. Looking at a couple uh, stainless steel sets for grilling, a charbroil grill, flagpole, 
we're starting to near up on summer here. We're coming around that corner. We can all see that the light at the end of the tunnel. And so what I want to do now is with the new year, I want to update all of these based on the price list, the annual price list that they've sent me. I prefer not to enter these by hand. And so what I want to do is I want to create my price worksheet here. And doing this, it'll bring over all of the items listed on that screen that we had prior. So however I filter that down, in this case, it was by my vendor, that data comes through to my worksheet. From here, I want to update all my pricing and mass based off of what that vendor had sent me or communicated to me. All right, so first thing I want to do is I want to set that effective date here. I know today is February 14th, Valentine's Day, but these prices were effective as of the start of the year. So I'm going to change that for us here. And then with that, there's a couple ways that we can go now. And so maybe the vendor said, hey, inflation was 5% this year. We're raising all our prices by 5%. In an instance like this, we head over to our Calculate Pending Prices button. I take my percent of the original price. I increase it to 105%. We have a couple different price basis here. So what are you increasing by 105%? If I take a look, if I drag this over, we have our source price. So that was our last year's price list that they sent us. Otherwise, you have a couple other ones here that are stored on the item, your last cost, your average cost, or your MSRP. If I go ahead and click update, it's going to automatically put a 5% increase on those prices for me. I can hand key those in to update them as well. It's very manual, especially with a longer list. Um, potentially, what happens is the vendor sends you a price list every year with updated annual prices. You just wanna take that price list, load it into the system, make your life a little bit easier. We can do that as well. So you potentially get a price list that looks something like this, has those items, what the unit of measure is, maybe a break quantity, maybe a, hopefully a price there. Hopefully it's not too high of a price. And then that effective date, like we talked about. So I just wanna take this Excel sheet, I wanna upload it right up into my vendor price worksheet to update all my prices accordingly. So I'm going to go ahead to my load records from file button here. I'm going to choose the file that I want to upload. Go ahead and select that. And we're going to click upload. We're going to set our mode to update existing because we already have those lines in there from last year. We're just looking to update the price. Go ahead and click OK. What you'll see here on my screen is two columns. On the left-hand column, we have your Excel column names. So these are copied right from your first row in Excel. And then what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to match those to the property name, which is the fields in Acumatica. So my vendor is matched for me, my inventory ID. And the last thing I wanna do is I wanna make sure that my price goes into the pending price column in Acumatica. Go ahead and click okay. And now what you'll see is my pricing re-updated based off of all of that information that I had in Excel. So these prices are now uploaded into Acumatica. When we're ready, we can go ahead and we can release this, save this, remove our hold, press release, and this will update our pricing into the system. The last place I wanna take us today is just jumping back into that price list that we looked at before under our vendor pricing. Let's filter down this list to that same vendor. And what you'll see here is those new prices that we just assigned to those items from this vendor, along with that effective date that we had on our worksheet. If I remove this parameter up here, you can take a look at all the pricing that's existed for this vendor and its history. You'll see last year's prices had an expiration date automatically assigned to them based off of what we entered as this year's effective date. All right, so that's all I have for you today. Hopefully you learned a few things about creating requisitions, vendor bidding, and improving how you can track pricing in your system today. I'm gonna kick it back over to John to wrap us up here.
Excellent. Thank you, Brady. It seems like we're getting everything in line for 4th of July with all that barbecue. Right. Inventory. I'll go ahead and uh, I'll go share out the deck here. Just give me one second. <clears throat> Hopefully I don't get kicked off again. Sometimes that does happen. <laughs> All right. Excellent. Uh, so with that, hopefully you see the thank you slide here now. And just want to make sure that uh, we have everything here um, available for uh, the attendees on the call. Uh, so with that, we have our contact information um, that's posted here. Also, you'll notice a QR code for our next webinar. You can go ahead and actually scan that right now if you prefer to register, uh, fill out the, the form for that and receive a notification around that. Um, and then also, too, we do like to direct our community uh, to our webinar series on YouTube. So that's where we uh, consolidate all of these recordings. And you'll be able to see the full um, the full listing of all previous webinars, including uh, new feature reviews that we've done for the 23R1 and R2. We've covered a number of different areas related to CRM. So go ahead and check out that page. And we're always uploading it to that um, as your centralized location. Uh, below that, you'll see the Acumatica community. Definitely encourage individuals to go out to that community board. You'll find a lot of information within the forums um, related to a number of topics. Um, if there, if it's related to Acumatica in some capacity, I'm sure you can find a form for it. All right. So with that, Tanya, are there any questions um, that we have queued up yet? We had a question. It was answered directly, but I'll just open it up here, um, you know, for the sake of the recording uh, regarding historical pricing and does the system keep track of that? And Brady did answer that if you remove a parameter on the effective date, that you are able to see all historical pricing that you've entered in the system with their respective effective and expiration dates. So in case anybody else was wondering. Excellent. Great, thank you, Tanya. Right. And Tanya, is there anything else in the queue? That was it. That was it, all right. There's no additional questions. I'll go ahead and stop sharing my screen. Um, and again, thank you everybody for attending. We always do like seeing our, our clients attend these um, and we'll be back on on March 13th if I got that date right. All right, thank you everybody. Enjoy the Thanks rest of everyone. Thank you.